Hey, what's next? <laughs> All right. So we've used the FS parallel guides to yep. get perfect 300 millimeter rips. Okay, and a hundred millimeter rip for Can't our spans. Can't forget that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we need to get 90. We need to cross cut, and you've done some of that before, yep. but I wanna show you a few. Well, let's go through the normal process of it. Uh, on a table saw, you get your perfect rips, but how do you get your 90s? How do you get perfect cross cuts? There's a variety of ways. A lot of people make cross cut sleds because they can make stops and they can set it, but you gotta make a jig, okay? It takes up a lot of shop space. The other way you can do it is you can buy a sliding table attachment for your table saw, or you can go out and spend some serious coin like on an Altendorf, okay? Which is a $20,000 sliding table saw. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up the multifunction table. Okay. I mean, if we look at it right here, it's a series of drilled out 20 millimeter holes. But the beauty of it, and I've always told everybody, when you set this up correctly for our cross cutting station with our track saw, you will get perfect 90 degree cuts. Nice. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Sounds good. This is all the gear that comes with the multifunction table, and it's it can be a simple process of putting it together. It's Ooh. just knowing which stuff goes where, and I'm gonna also show you how to calibrate it so we get those perfect 90 degree cuts. Awesome. Okay, so this is what I want you to zoom in on. You see right here, there's a stop, and Chris, you can come back here and check this out. There's a, these are called factory set stops, okay? Now, I'm gonna get in front of the camera here, and I'm gonna stay right here. When I'm standing at the front of the table, Okay, those stops are to my right. Always to That allows us to put these on. This is how the rail attaches temporarily to the table. Okay, the guide rail. Okay. So, I'm gonna put this one on, and this one goes to the front. And you're gonna notice there's a black key here. There's a little knuckle that locks on here. And what that does is that locks the height for different thicknesses of wood. The one thing I wanna really point out to you is this knob, this knob, and this knob. It sounds funny that I'm pointing out to that, but once we square this, if one of those knobs is loose, it'll, it won't remain square. Okay? Oh, okay. So when I put this on, I always put it the long way to the stop. I slide it in like this. I bring it all the way to that stop. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten that knob. Okay, Big D. I'm gonna take this all the way up here and I'm gonna tighten it. Okay, now I'm gonna have you put this one on. See how this has a hinge right here? Yep. Okay, this is how, with the steel key, I'm gonna have you put that on. Okay. Just like I did, open that up. Open up the, there you go. So it slides right on there. Slides all the way in. There you go, lift that little knuckle up over that extrusion, just like that, like I did. There you go, slide it all the way and tighten that black knob first. And we're tight. Perfect, now lift it all the way up. Okay, good, good, good. Now lock that down. Okay. Perfect, now the other thing I'm gonna show you is right here, is I always verify that this here has locked substantially to that, okay. is I always put pressure on here. Not a lot. If that slides down, right here are two five millimeter screws, and if it's too tight or too loose, I can always tighten that up okay. so it doesn't move. I'll come over here and check this one. This one's fine. Right. Cool? cool? Okay, the next part of the puzzle to put together is this. I'm gonna have you scoot over. And it goes on here, right here. You'll see this little V. It goes in the V groove just like this. And I lock it down with this knob down here. Now I'm just gonna set this off to the side. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this piece and you're gonna see how it slides in. This is called an angle unit. And I'm gonna slide it in, and I'm gonna tighten this knob. See it? Okay, yep, okay. same small knob like this one. Perfect. Okay. Now, see this? I'm gonna take the rail. If we look right here, there's a groove, see it? Yep. I'm gonna slide it right on this steel key. Okay, and underneath, okay, now, if we can zoom over here, you see that little pin? Yep. That sits right on top. Perfect. We're okay. In. Now we're gonna tighten, and I'm gonna slide this over so you can see it. These are two five millimeter screws here, and when I show people this, 
See this right here? I call this the outboard one, and this is the inboard. This one is the one we pretty much only tighten. This one we just snug. Okay. There's a reason for that. Okay, I'm going to slide that back on. And if we look at these holes, all the guide rails have holes. Obviously, they're for hanging on these, this one and this one, are for hanging it on the wall for storage. Okay, but you see how that pins in there like that? Yep. I'm going to reach underneath here like this. I'm going to take my five millimeter hex key and I'm going to use the short arm that way there I can get leverage to tighten it. I'm going to put it in here like this and you notice, look at that lever, and I'm going to tighten it. Okay, I'm not going to kill it, but... Tighten it enough. Right, but check this. You see how it's in the pin? There was no movement. Yeah. That's so it's perfect. Now, if I'm going to tighten this one underneath, the one that's inboard, see how that's off of the pin? Yep. So I'm going to come in here like this. I'm going to use the long arm. I'm not going to get a lot of torque. And I'm just going to snug it. Now here's the telltale sign. When I take that, that should fall right down on that pin and it does. Boom. If you ever setting up an MFT and you get a tug it over, mm -mm, it's not good. Something's not right. Okay, so there you go. Now we're going to put this on. Okay. Okay, so we just take it like this, and you're going to see the groove here. Okay, it goes on these two T's right here. And as I slide it in, you'll see it. I'll do it just like this. Watch. See how that pulls in? Mm -hmm. Can you put it all the way out here? Absolutely. So you're going to cut it with the saw. Yeah. Okay. Do you put it perfectly even? If you're cutting at 90 degrees. Okay. Okay, where I like to coach people on where to put this, as you see, this is my cut line here. I put it to the first hole underneath the guide rail. Okay. Kind of in the middle. Because lo and behold, you can take a track saw, and the beauty of the track saw is when you tilt it, it cuts on the same plane mm -hmm. as the splinter guard, whether 90 or anywhere between zero and 47 degrees. Guess what? You, you can cut it 90 if it was out here in line with the splinter guard, but you're gonna tilt that saw, and you're gonna what? Yeah. Put a bevel on your on your fence so we're gonna put it on like that and we're just gonna tighten this right here okay so there you go huh. now when i set this up i'm going to take this now and i'm going to set it down to the guide rail okay so we're getting a little bit even now okay the pin is always engaged always make sure okay. just like this yep. all right now i want you to pay attention to this this is how we tighten this on the rail this here I'm going to loosen, and you'll see this positive detents in here. And you'll notice that this is, as it falls on a detent, it's spring-loaded. Okay. Over the years and years of using this, sometimes that spring wears out a little. So what you always want to do is you want to press it in at zero. Okay. Okay? Now, I have that, and I want you to see this. I'm going to tighten it all the way up. Okay? And I want you to come out here and just tug this a little back and forth. See that? That's called deflection. Yeah. That's not good. So what you got to do is as I'm cutting, you see this little extrusion right here? You have to hold this like this. No thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what this does is this knocks out that deflection. Gotcha. See this V right here? This V groove? See that V? This slides in like this. You don't jam it forward. You just nestle it into that groove. Okay. You lock it back here and then you tighten this. Now feel that. No deflection. No deflection. You also have this. It's a repeatable stop. It fits in here like this. I've seen people put them on like this. It comes with one. I always set up two. And people go, well, this is for, you know, cutting a wider piece. No, that's not why that's longer. Okay, the reason that's longer is I'll show you. What if you have multiple three-quarter pieces? Those would slide here as you stack them, right. but you can take this, you see this bottom groove? You can stack it like this. Go ahead and set that down. You can stack it like this, and you can stack three three-quarter pieces and cut them simultaneously. Oh, nice. And that's why you have this like this, and you can still lock it down. But you see this? Then this stop now works like this all the way down. That's why we have that long leg on that stop. Awesome. Okay. Capiche? Makes sense. Capiche. See this right here? This is a cord and hose minder. It's a channel for that to flow on. So I want you to look at it and you tell me that goes on the end there. Yep. How does that go on? You make sure this is loose, right? Yeah. And this goes... Just like that just and like tighten that. it up. So now you can put the hose and the cord in there. But remember what I've always taught you. 
Yeah, you wrap the cord and the hose up around your yeah. arm, okay? But that's just a, that'll also keep it in line for you. So that's the basic setup of your multi-function table. But now, we wanna make sure that we're gonna get a 90 degree cut. Okay, so what I always suggest with everybody is make sure you have a really accurate square, okay? <clears throat> now, all aluminum extrusion from any extruder is extruded perfectly parallel, okay? So if this is extruded perfectly parallel and this is perfectly parallel, we need to know that this intersection here is at 90. So when we put our tracks on here, we'll get that 90 degree cut. Okay. So I always find a square that has a tall leg or tongue and I bring it in here just like this. Okay, see that? Yep. Does that look square? Well, let's open this up. Let's take this and loosen it up, okay? Okay, now I can see that that to me is not perfectly square. It looks a little okay. thicker. And I'm gonna make sure I press it down so I'm in that detent. Okay. So now we have to calibrate it. Okay. Okay, now, <clears throat> I've used all kinds of things like post-it notes and stuff like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to loosen these two five millimeter screws. Okay, just don't have to kill it when you retighten them either. Okay, so now you have play and you're gonna see that I have a little bit of play in there, okay? What I like to do is I like to use shim stock. And this is some of the finest shim stock I've ever used. They're the equal thickness. So I put one in here and you can see how that's oh, too yeah. far away. So what I would do is I'd bring it in perfect like this, okay? You can use thinner stuff. I just prefer using these business cards because they're absolutely perfect. <laughs> wink, wink. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, so there you go. And then what we'll do is we'll just tighten up Lock her down. these screws, making sure you're in that zero. Okay, and then I'm going to come in here. Now, I always like to show this that, look, see how that's tight and that's tight? Now we're going to get a perfect 90 degree cut. Boom. <laughs> cool. Hey, what's next? Boy, we didn't script that, did we? Okay, <laughs> this is our fifth take. All right, you've done this with me before. We yeah. did a video earlier. It's cross-cutting on the multifunction table. What we, I think we called the video cross-cutting in a small shop. Yes, sir, okay. I think so. This is Woodworking 101. You already know what's next. What are we gonna do to this piece of plywood? We got perfect parallel rips. What are we gonna do to one end of it? Gotta make sure it's got a perfect edge. No, it's gonna be perfect. Perfect 90. 90. Great, so that's why we went through the process that's right. of doing this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this down. I'm gonna have you grab that uh, track saw behind me. Don't put it on there yet. I'm gonna lock it down. I'm gonna make sure it's the right height, making sure that that pin, because we already checked for 90, make sure it's fully supported. Okay, make sure that this clean edge is up against there. Yep. I always do this. I label where my edge is gonna be, and I want you to make your cross cut. You got the depth okay. set, it's perfect. It's the same get depth. behind the saw. Remember, get that plug it cord in. Today, <laughs> full quarter turn. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna take that out of there. Okay, good, perfect. Now, before we go and reset it, I want to make sure that this is 90 degrees here. Okay. Okay, so I can't reach over there to the second drawer to the left. Chris, maybe you can. No, next one. There you go. Grab that big square there. All right. You remember, you make sure you square square. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to bring that right in and look how dead on that is all the way out. Beautiful. Absolutely perfect. So what do you do? What do you do? You tell me. We got to do our corner. Right? Yeah. Because that's our right. Perfect. All right. He's learning. <laughs> okay, so both our sides are going to be 768 millimeter. We can get in here. And on this tape, you see that 768. Uh, a duh, that's 
an equivalent of a 32 millimeter length. What? Okay, so we'll make our mark right there. That's what these little diamonds are in this uh, tape. That was a 768? Yep, 768. Right that, right up here so mm -hmm. we can see it. We're going to do two at 768 millimeters. Okay. And two at 732. 732. Okay, and just for uh, giggles, I'll tell you, this is 18 millimeter plywood, so 18 millimeter and 18 millimeter is 36. Plus 732 comes to 748. So this is going to be a perfect box. Or 768? Yeah, 768. Okay. Okay, so two sides because as we sandwich the top and bottom together. Gotcha. Okay, so what we'll do is I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to have you over here. Okay. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to bring my guide rail down. And because we cut our splinter guard with the saw, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that and I'm gonna split that line, just like that. Okay. Now, we need two of them. We're not gonna, now, it doesn't have to be perfect, mm -hmm. but it should be, okay? Yeah. Cause say this is an entire kitchen of uh, wall cabinets, right? You want repeatability. Yep. So guess what, bring that in. Just like you wanted that repeatable 300 millimeter rip, okay. we're gonna get repeatability. We're gonna bring this in just like this and we'll make our cut. Cool? cool. Don't need that right now. Uh -huh. Okay. We're gonna we're fully support it over here with our um, rolling STM mobile saw station. Go ahead and let's make that cut. And we'll just verify the length in a few minutes after he makes the cut. Okay. Perfect. Boy, I'm gonna tell you, dude, that's about the best cut I've ever seen. Okay. <laughs> So let's take that out. Okay. And now here, before we do this, I want to verify this. This, this measurement is probably the, the most important measurement of building uh, the cabinetry because when we use the LA32 system with the router, um, you'll see where we don't have to set up two sets of lines. We only have to set up one because uh. it is a balanced panel. So let's just look it out. Okay. Let's just take it like this and look at that. Look at you. Look at your measuring. 768 millimeters. Absolutely perfect at 90. So guess what? We're good to go. We're just going to take this. Look at Russell Bob. Okay, and 768. Because the 732 increments are really close. So I'm just gonna slide this in if you don't mind, Big D. Sounds good. Okay, so now another tip I'm gonna tell you. See the knob on your repeatable stop? Mm -hmm. Tighten it really good. Put it okay. <clears throat> you know why? Because when you are kind of bringing these in, sometimes there's a tendency to jam it up against there and you'll move that a millimeter off if you oh, put too yeah. much pressure. So what I do is I always am aware of just nestling it up against there and making sure I'm up against this fence. Okay. So go ahead and make that other cut, bro. Okay, let's get that labeled. Man, we're almost, we almost have a cabinet. Go figure. And he's getting good. So what we wanna do is we wanna measure this one, 732. Okay. Now this one's not imperative because we're not gonna be punching any holes in it. But I'm just gonna take that and bring it in. Boy, I, I've labeled. Uh, lumber all kinds of different ways, but this is the way I like to do it 700 see that 30. There's my two Okay, right there and what I do is I make a point sometimes because I know I'm right in the middle of the line. Okay. okay, so let's bring it in. I'm gonna have you lay down the guide rail. Okay Okay, it's gonna be a little bit shorter, but bring it in split that line just like that Good job, bro. Go. Good job. Get it where you okay. want it. There you go. Now set the stop. Man, you did crank that. I sure did. Holy moly, you strong like bull. Call me soldier boy. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, wait you. a minute. Do you need the spoiler? spoiler. Get out of here. Let's go. You want to know something? That's about the best cut I've ever seen. Okay. He's <laughs> repeating that. Okay. So what's next? Can you get a 732 out of that? Well, if we turn it sideways. No. no. <laughs> All right. Hey, really quick. What, what are we going to do next? We're going to get another 300 millimeter piece, right? Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do first? So let's get this. Let's label this. Okay. We're going to take this, flip it out of the way. Okay. Okay. We want to hold the accuracy of that because that's 732. Mm -hmm. Let's set that board over there. Okay, now we're gonna grab this piece, right? We got it labeled 300. 
Yep. There, you grab that. Don't knock out my lights. Woo! Or anything else. <laughs> now what are we gonna do? So you're automatically taking this. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most common mistakes. Hey, that's all you're wonderful. automatically taking this, right? Right. And you're gonna bring this down and cut a 732. What's gonna be the problem? I don't have a right. Ah, you don't have a 90 degrees. That's why the stop flips. We feed it this way. Go ahead and lift it up onto there. And we get the circle table over there. And now we gotta get a 90 on this. This is so common. And then, so what happens is you, if you had done that and you've gotten a 732 cut on that, we don't know if that was 90 yet. Okay. You have to ensure it's 90. So you, when we start joining that box together, that could twist the box out of square. Don't wanna do that. Don't wanna do that. So let's get the 90 on here. We'll yeah. label it. Wow. That's about the best cut I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Every time. So what are you gonna do? So I'm gonna feed this <laughs> What are you gonna do? Oh, mark it first. So we know we have our 90. Good. So you're gonna take this now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it like this, not take out the garage door opener, flip it, go ahead, flip down your stop. We're gonna bring it right in like this, and there you go. Let's get that 732 out of that. You are the man. Wow, that's about the best cut I've ever seen. But look at your label. Okay, and this is our 732. Perfect, there's our get the tops and bottoms done. And I'm gonna say this a hundred times during this video. It's the process of the making your panels. Assembly is gonna be absolutely nothing, okay? It, it the time consuming part is perfect parallel rips, making sure your cross cuts are 90. So now what we're gonna do is we're probably we're gonna not probably we're gonna go into edge banding. Okay. And we're gonna go into uh, punch it, or we're gonna trim it, and then we're gonna punch the 32 millimeter holes. And after a while you're gonna your head swimming going, when are we gonna end up with the cabinet? We're gonna create a groove in the back for okay. a quarter inch panel. We'll, uh, we'll cross cut, I, will do off. I always like to do the final cross cut on the spanners. We could cut them at 732, but sometimes things get tweaked. And then we're gonna do our joinery, and we'll, set, we'll cut our backs and just assemble it, it'll be easy. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs>